Welcome to the follow-up podcast. My name is Hayden. I am the worship director here at Arbor Church, and today I'm joined by Ryan Plants, our lead pastor. Hey. And Allison Oconey, our associate pastor and speaker from Sunday. So we are in um, the sixth week yeah, of this Resilient is week, Joy. Week six. Week six. Mm-hmm. Out um, of how many? Ten. 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 Six mm-hmm. out of ten. So we're we're just past We the just halfway. eclipsed the halfway point. Yeah. Four more to go. Four more. Uh-huh. Um, so this message, Allison, that you shared with us on Sunday, um, it definitely was heard different than it was read. So when I looked at the manuscript, I had one idea of where things were going and what I thought, what I perceived the reception to be. And then getting to like see the illustrations and the stuff that you used in your sermon obviously was way different than how I read it. Um, but before we hop into... For example, illustrations, some of the stuff that you used. I kind of just want to look at um, what the week or weeks leading up to, what that was like, the process. So when you got this uh, chunk of scripture, what was your initial thoughts on maybe like your first couple ideas of where this would go? Or maybe if you had a really frank reading of it and you're like, this is the week that I get. Um <laughs> Yeah, so what was what was your initial impression when you, when you read through this chunk and found out you'd be teaching on it? It lit me up, man. I loved it from the get-go. Although, I think I said in last week's podcast that when I initially read through it, I saw it in two chunks. And it originally was super compelling to dive into the first chunk of it and have that be the main thing. And then over the course of time, I realized the back end of the passage also was so rich. So I was like, how do I divide between these two and and communicate it in such a way that both would be seen as like the main point? Mm. So anyhow, I, I loved it from the get-go. I was lit up. It was super fun to spend time with the Lord on this and um, seeing what he had uh, to bring forward to the Arbor family. I kind of knew that I would just go out of the box with delivery because Mm -hmm. um, Ryan is so awesome as a speaker, and I have not spoken since he has joined the team. So my last time that I spoke was the Sunday you were just sitting here. You hadn't like been... Um, oh, it was initiated yet. It was the 24th, right? Right. It was like bridge day. Yeah. And so ever since July... Yeah. People have been able to receive from your teaching and you have a certain style Mm -hmm. that's all your own. So I knew like, I can't compete at all with how Ryan teaches. Why don't I just come as myself? So that's what it looked like. It was just a little bit out of the box. Well, I loved it. I loved, (laughs) I loved how out of the box it was. I think I, I, first of all, it's not about competing at all, no. right? And I know no, that. And I know that. Yes. Yeah. But and but what I do think is really more important is I'm not going to try to slot into that same way of doing it. I have a different way that I hit the ball. Mm-hmm. And what I really appreciate is that you leaned into that this weekend and that we were blessed by the way in which you chose to um, unpack and deliver this message with your kind of running themes uh, with like kind of Coach Paul mm-hmm. and the team and the locker room and the sports <laughs> kind of thing, and and then some of your like very vivid illustrations, I I thought were very like valuable and important, and they're going to stick with us for a long time. Oh, I appreciate mm-hmm. that. I hope that's true. And I I don't see our teaching here as competition. I just know we all have different styles. <laughs> <laughs> Aiden, you. But I think when people come and visit a church, they are wondering what is normal? Like, what can I expect? And what is normal? And I would say, I am not that normal. And so what was yesterday isn't normal. It's just kind of a one-off. But, you know, we can engage scripture differently. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So what in particular about this passage, you had said when you read it, you were lit up. Um, What about it lit you up? Mm. I loved his first uh, call to rejoice in the Lord, and it felt like the main idea. So, like, our joy is from Christ alone. Mm -hmm. So um, everything that followed that in the passage was reflecting back to, like, your privileges, your accomplishments, your trophies in life. um, Those aren't going to bring you that resilient joy. 
it's going to only be found in the Lord. And so um, I loved that reminder. I think it's always, uh, it's never a bad time to be reminded of that Mm -hmm. because everybody's weak from week to week. We struggle with resilient joy and we're like, what is going on? And then you're like, hey, don't forget, like, it's not all about how well you perform at Mm -hmm. your job or how, you know, what your sales quota is or whatnot. It's like, no, go back to the Lord and like find it rooted there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it, it starts out finally my brothers and sisters rejoice in the Lord, but then it jumps to, um, beware of the dogs, beware of the evil workers, beware of those who mutilate the flesh, like harsh, harsh. He lost shift his of joy. Gears. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was pretty upset there. It seemed yeah. like, yeah. yeah he was or concerned up. at least. Yeah. Right? Concerned. Uh-huh. And then also like what can be perceived, but not the case of like, um, like arrogant Paul of like, you know, if anyone has the credentials, um, when you're reading that and I know obviously we tried to break these, um, these scriptures into chunks that would make sense. You have like a, big shift in tone and I mean and and maybe not maybe like I'm just not seeing the the connection there right off the bat but like when you're reading through these things and you realize we're not handcuffed to you have to spend the same amount of time on every verse when you read through those first couple verses what goes through your head on like okay how am I going to um not necessarily make this relevant to the congregation, but how do I communicate this? How do I show maybe um, the connection in, mm-hmm. in it? Mm-hmm. Well, that's where I thought of a coach in a locker mm-hmm. room. He's going to say what the main point is, which is rejoice in the Lord. And then mm-hmm. he's going to talk about the opponent. So then, you know, what does the team across town um, have to do with us? What are our challenges with them? Um, so all of those things in that next passage, like, the Judaizers who are saying you need to add to the gospel, um, the cross is not enough. You need to also get circumcised. And nothing inflames him more than to think that anything would be added to the gospel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I thought that all was actually congruent altogether, um, that he's saying, no, those things, you're not going to find your right standing with God through any of those privileges or religious acts. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just faith in Christ alone yeah. and he's just fired up about it. Yeah. So yeah, I, I just pictured a coach in a locker room mm-hmm. getting kind of hyped up a bit. What do I know about locker rooms? But well, Ted I mean, Lasso, yeah, right? Yeah. So, and you're like our number one resident, like sports ball advocate. You know, you're always talking. Did you guys saw, see the sports ball game? Always talking weekend? about sports. Always mm-hmm. talking about your fantasy teams. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, just like it's, it's it yeah. gets exhausting. It's a normal Monday meeting for gets, us where Allison's talking about sports and we're just glazed over. You know, like, um, we, we have to. We have to. We have to get to work here, yeah. Allison. The like, irony. Yeah, the game. So it was yeah. cool to see. It was cool to see how you were able to kind of bring in your passion of sports <laughs> right. into yeah. this. Into this passage. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you think, Allison, that like, um, you know, when Paul calls the Philippians to beware of the dogs, and there are these individuals who are like, you know, seeking to add to the gospel, um, do, do you see that as like being kind of like, in our world, in our day, do you see this being like the different things that kind of tempt us to find joy? Or like, are the, is this kind of more like an in-house church kind of thing? Like, are we, like, are the dogs people outside the church or inside the church? I think they find themselves inside the church invariably. Okay. Because we listen to them as like, oh, you're, you're somebody of faith or mm-hmm. like you seem like you have your faith together. And they're yeah. like, yes, gospel plus, gospel plus this, yeah. gospel plus that. Um, and, and we are tempted by that, right? Mm-hmm. We're tempted to think that that is how we're going to be in right standing with the Lord. I'm thinking about our Power and Weakness book by Timothy Loomis. Gombus. Gombus, mm-hmm. thank you. Mm-hmm. And he um, was talking about seminary degrees mm. and how that helps promote. Um, and he was not for it necessarily because he was saying people get a little puffed up by yeah. that, thinking that they're all all that. Well, yeah, especially, I mean, yeah, to, to go down that trail, he was especially talking about not... Um, uh, even M. Divs, but uh, the doctorate, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. the doctorate in the ministry, the demon. Yeah. Right. So the then demonization of ministry is what he called it. Demonization. Yeah. 
So we would look at that and say, okay, well, those people are right with the Lord, mm-hmm. or we'd be tempted to think that, right? Sure. Like, oh, they have mm-hmm. a certain degree, mm-hmm. um, or they're at a certain place in their faith, and so they must have it all. Mm-hmm. Um, Paul is just saying it's Christ alone. Yeah. It's Christ alone with our right standing. Yeah. Not Christ plus. Plus anything else. Yeah. Yeah, because when I wrestle with this passage as you were teaching it, I was like trying to bring it into like my own life and think through like, am I, what am I leaning on mm-hmm. in my life? Uh, what are other people leaning on? And I, I, I kind of go to, you know, we had talked originally about how there's some, there seems to be some connection to like the concept of status yeah, and how we brought that up a couple of weeks ago. And I think that for, you know, some of us, um, we struggle with um, financial security or when is enough enough or those sorts of things or those seeking out those status markers to find joy in our lives. Um, but it almost seems like perhaps that's something that like, is layered in here, but it seems almost more connected to like our actual righteousness, like to our actual like rightness with God is kind of what Paul is getting at here. So. <laughs> you were just like so in agreement. Yeah. I thought there was gonna be a follow up there. It um, was going to be, and then my phone buzzed and I got distracted. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Emphatic um, listening yeah. moment. So um, you had said, that during the research and the reading um, and formulating the sermon that the coach analogy really stood out to you. And you'd mentioned on stage, um, Ted Lasso, um, (laughs) and which, you know, is not the only introduction into sports for you. It's many things, but um, when in the process did that illustration kind of enter in? And was there, um, I don't want to say like, you formed your message around an illustration, but at what point did, was that helpful for you to look at this through the lens of Coach Paul, you know? Well, trying to bridge those mm-hmm. two parts of the passage and make them equally, yeah. um, to put an emphasis on yeah. both, I thought about a game has a pregame talk and a like a halftime yeah. talk. Mm-hmm. And I know I mixed all of my metaphors during this. So mm-hmm. nobody knows if we we're talking about basketball or yeah. football or whatnot during this. But I took that halfway point to think of it as a, a mid-game pep talk too. Because yeah. mm-hmm. he's kind of going in a different direction. He's then talking about a race yeah. and finishing the race. So I don't know at what point um, the whole locker room analogy yeah. came mm-hmm. to be, but um, when I'm assigned a passage and I feel like I just am saturated with yeah. it for weeks and weeks, um, yeah. strange things come, you know, mm-hmm. in yeah. the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> just an idea. Uh-huh. Just yeah. They do, because I'm trying to make sense of it. And you do a lot of reading and researching and we have conversation. Mm-hmm. Um and meanwhile, the spirit just kind of is putting together some things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I th- I think um, the reason I ask that is I think the process is so interesting. Obviously, most of us are coming for that Sunday morning, um, and we're hearing the message, and we're getting um, we're getting the product that is a week long or weeks long, right? And the process doesn't really get explained a whole lot, but it's interesting because it seems like since we've been doing this podcast, we've, we've heard a number of messages and processes that can either start like granular and move to, um, where the, the message ends. But it's interesting when, when these illustrations or these frameworks come out and to, and to know how much of an effect does that have on, um, your understanding of a passage? Cause that's really what we're doing on a Sunday morning, right? Is, you are sharing as the speaker your understanding of what this is. And and hopefully, and I would say probably most times, that comes from the Holy Spirit making its way into that process. Um, and I think the Holy Spirit works in mysterious ways. Yeah. The mm-hmm. clip that I used at the end to indicate yeah. the the race, and that we're not running the race of faith alone, even when we stumble or are injured yeah. on the race or we've given up hope um, that the Holy Spirit is yeah. joining us and and is helping us finish yeah. well, finish period and finish well. Yeah. Um, so a couple of weeks ago, uh, Derek Redmond's father died mm-hmm. and 
the Olympic Committee started re-airing clips from this race. And so a couple weeks ago, I'm stewing about a race. And so being exposed to um, this Barcelona Olympic story is clicking with me like that represents the Holy Spirit helping us run our race and coming in when we are we think we're flat out. He yeah. he tore his hamstring, mm-hmm. which I can't imagine how painful that is. But oh yeah, um, he he thought he was down for the count, and then out of the stands comes his dad and helps him finish. And I'm thinking, okay, how many Christians do we know, ourselves included, have run a race and have either gotten weary midway, we've given up hope, or we've had some sort of like fall. Mm-hmm. And we think we okay, that's it. Can't finish. I'm out, or I'm going to limp along, and it's going to be almost impossible mm-hmm. to finish well. And then along comes the Holy Spirit, guiding us upward. Yeah, I mean, I'm just I was so compelled by that. Yeah, well, and I don't want to take away at all from the Holy Spirit, but I think that um, <laughs> anything you say before that's but right, good. yeah. <laughs> um, but there's it requires a certain amount of openness and creativity to allow for that. Right. Um, obviously you're putting together a message and this happens and both can be these isolated in a vacuum events, but being able to be open to the idea of, Oh wow, this could work in a sermon. This could be a very helpful illustration. And, um, but sometimes I, I, I feel like it can be hard to get out of, I'm here to teach the word and let the word speak for itself. Um, and I want to have a very academic or, you know, maybe not too many illustrations because it can take away. But I think that what we saw on Sunday was some of these examples that happen in real life and especially the, the re-airing of all of this can be so helpful for all of our understandings on things. And, um, a lot of us who have grown up in the church, this is like the fourth or fifth time or however many times we've heard this passage, but there's a new understanding or appreciation that comes from, a real life example, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I hope. Yeah. And even the night before, um, when was that windstorm? Oh, it was Friday yeah, night because they called it yeah. Friday night no lights yeah. storm mm-hmm. instead of Friday light. Friday night, night lights. lights. Yeah, Friday. this is your sports ball thing again. Yeah, see, I'm doing sports ball again. <laughs> Who called it that? Um, PSE, I think, or whoever the energy company. I don't know. Oh, okay. Somebody they locally. Spun a they spun situation. it. Like they branded. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. The, the power company branded yeah. the power yeah. outage. <laughs> we do that up here. Yeah. I don't know. Do you guys? No, did we, you do we, that? Guys, no, we, we don't. I think I think our our tax dollars are used for, for more efficient things. <laughs> oh no, we've had Hanukkah Eve storm. We've had Hanukkah Eve. Um, yeah. Wow. You guys have Hanukkah on the East Coast? The Midwest. Sorry. Midwest. <laughs> Midwest yeah. Yes. Sorry. Never heard of Hanukkah Eve though, but very yeah. cool. Yeah. 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 It was very a cool. big one. So Friday night, no lights. So Friday night, yeah. no lights storm <laughs> nice. happened awesome. and trees were crashing everywhere. Yeah. Right. And they were making us lose power. They were blocking roads, all this. And I was thinking about the, the concept of resiliency during that because mm-hmm. we are seeing plenty of big trees bending in the wind yeah. and not falling. Mm-hmm. Um, And so anyhow, it just also stirred in me that concept of like, what causes things to be so rooted, not able to fall, bending a little bit, and then coming back up, Mm -hmm. right? Something that's resilient Mm -hmm. like that in our faith. Like we can bob a bit and have hard times. I feel like if we're rooted in our faith and, you know, nice and established and strong, we're not going to be prone to uproot during one of those kinds of storms. So anyhow, yeah, it's, it's a creative process. Um, it's exhausting, but it's also like giving birth, um, to sit with a passage for a long time and be so, um, saturated and obsessed with it almost. So then after you deliver the message, there's a different kind of quiet and peace that comes out of that. Yeah, I'm glad you said giving birth because, like, you and I can obviously relate on that. <laughs> yeah. um, that was a very helpful mm-hmm. way to describe that. Um, Ryan, did you have something? To, at one point, you looked like you were going to say something, and then I talked over you. No, I mean, I I think um, kind of going toward the end of the passage, um, and in verse 10, Paul writes, My aim is to know him, to experience the power of his resurrection, to share in his sufferings, and to be like him in his death, and so somehow to attain the resurrection from the dead. 
Um, and then he kind of goes on and he talks about like, not that I've obtained this, but he continues to strive like moving forward. And I mm -hmm. thought it was really encouraging how this past week you even shared, like, here's Paul and he shares this, what, you know, kind of you alluded to earlier, how he's like, I'm here, here's all my accomplishments. And I just, I don't receive that at all. Like mm -hmm. Paul's bragging yeah. at all. Yeah. Like, I really don't like, I've never mm -hmm. had that in this moment. In fact, I feel like next week when we're mm -hmm. this coming week, when we're talking about like, follow my example, yeah. I get a little bit more of a hint there, but not even that. Like, this is Paul. Like yeah. Paul can say whatever he wants, man. Mm -hmm. And so here he is, he's saying these things, but he still hasn't like, um, arrived and he's still pressing mm -hmm. on. Yeah. And so like, I, I guess I'm just wondering, like us kind of gathered around this moment, like, what what would you want someone to share with you if like you were kind of like running this race and you found yourself like mm. like with a hamstring injury like what what's the most important word like or maybe you've gone through something like that like what's the most important word someone's like shared with you in a season like that where you're like i'm gonna strive but like you said like I'm, i feel like i'm growing weary like i feel like paul kind of is touching on this a little bit in this letter and so mm. like who could be what's the guy's dad's name like Derek, Derek Redmond. Derek Redmond. Yeah. Like who, who's been a Derek Redmond to you or like, how can mm. we be a Derek Redmond to other people in our church? Mm. You know? Yeah. So you're asking who has been that and then how can we be that? Either. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, a great question. No. Yeah. I think about, um, man, two years ago when, I mean, the past two years have been challenging, um, as someone who works for a church and also just as a Christ follower, um, and I think just reaching out to just my mentors, the people that had helped, um, help me get started in this world. Um, just kind of describing what has been going on in the world. Obviously mm -hmm. they know that, but what has been happening at the local area. Um, and I think for me, I, I don't know if it's just the way I'm wired, but I think, I think hearing somebody else acknowledge what you're going through like oh, i can't imagine what that's like mm -hmm. you know i think for me part of it it's like okay i'm not crazy or melodramatic like you see it and like you you acknowledge man that would be really hard to go through i think that for me is always communicated and that might just be as simple as being seen like you're not crazy you're not being melodramatic this is a tough thing you're going through and i think especially in a race situation being like man you fought hard you you worked hard for it. You did this. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Like you've yeah. got, you can do this. Um, so I think that, that for me, the, the previous mentors and, and obviously still friends in my life, but also I think that's something that we can all do is, um, sometimes we can look to the destination and say like, you're so close, you can do it, but also just acknowledging the work and the hardship along the way can, mm -hmm. I think can give people that extra energy and, and follow through to finish. Yeah, I think totally. people who encourage me in my daily uh, race are more helpful sometimes than those who say like, oh, you only have 20 more years or whatever. Yeah. Like that seems a long way yeah. out sometimes. Uh, yeah. Um, and I know I'm closer to the finish line than you guys because of my age. But like for somebody to stay with me in the moment, give me space um, to be listened to um, and also space for me to hear the Holy Spirit speak into it more than um, people who are quick to rush me by the hardship of the moment. Mm. So um, with a pat answer or a really quick kind of textbook, like, don't forget, all things work together for good, mm -hmm. you know, like mm -hmm. that there wouldn't be easy answers. They would get, they would make space for me to mm -hmm. hear from the Lord. They would make space for me to be human. And then like, you know, say, how can I help or how can I be praying for you? Mm. Yeah. And not just, I don't necessarily want answers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How about for you, Ryan? What helps? Um, I, I would say, I would say something very similar to that. Um, I think someone who, I mean, we have to be vulnerable and open yeah. and we have to take those steps, I think, toward engaging with other people who are on the same journey. Um, and I, I, I think more, now more than ever, I am like deeply convinced that um, if we are going to be like faithful followers of Jesus and experience this kind of joy, it's not just going to come to us overnight. It's not going to come to us overnight. There's no silver bullet. 
this is a journey. This is a like this is a life decision. You know, I don't know. Like I'm just thinking like when people talk about making healthy decisions for your life and like in your diet and in your like exercise and all that kind of stuff. You know, so often the people who are really kind of nailing that or hitting that out of the park, they're like, this isn't like a seasonal thing. Like this is a life decision. And I, I think we, for many of us, myself included, we forget that like following Jesus is legitimately a life decision. And it's an all-encompassing, um, massive thing. And I think the more we advance kind of in this 21st century, just the more strange of a decision it's going to be. <laughs> It's just going it, to, it, and it feels, it feels, it feels more strange to be a Christian today than ever before in my life. And hopefully that's just not me getting gray hair and getting old vibes. You know what I mean? Like the kids now, <laughs> but I just, there is, there is just this sense where it's like, okay, if we're really going to do this, like it really does involve like a team effort of, of banding together and, and having eyes for other people too. You know, like, not just like, who, how can people encourage me? But like, when we gather here on Sundays, am I, are we looking around this room and, and thinking to ourselves, I mean, this, this might sound kind of just super abnormal, but like, how can I, how can I be of service and encouragement to someone else running this race? Or how is my, how is, how am I utilizing and leveraging my time and my experience and my home and everything to help others in this pursuit of Jesus and of his joy and of his hope and of his peace. Um, I, I really think that, you know, beyond just making the decision of, am I going to go to church today on a Sunday? Like we're, we're kind of getting, I think, to this inflection point as mm. a church in America mm. where like this, the, it, it's not a spectator sport you know, to kind of lean into this, the sports analogy. Like I would, I would rather have like a church of like 50 committed people who want to follow okay. Jesus than like 500 people who are like, Hey, cool show, you yeah. know? Oh gosh. And so I think like when we get into stuff like this, where Paul's like pressing on, yeah. it's just like, we can't have this conversation unless like we're really doing this. Yeah. And unless we're really pressing in and pressing on, like this kind of conversation just falls on deaf ears if that's yeah. not where we're at. Yeah. If we're not really pursuing after this prize, like yeah. the language Paul uses, yeah. I think in relation to like most of our Christian walks yeah. is absurd. Yeah. Because it just doesn't connect with us because for us. It's so intense. It's so intense. And for so many of us, our discipleship is not is a an appendage mm -hmm. that we kind of disregard most days of the week. Mm -hmm. And and I just, I, I think like if we really believe this and want to pursue this, like then this is, it's a lifestyle thing. Mm -hmm. and we're really going to need one another because it's going to be like those Tuesdays or that Friday where we're like, man, we're hurting and like we need someone because pursuing Jesus has cost us, mm -hmm. you know, it's cost us. And, and we need assistance in kind of moving along the trail. What was, what was his dad's name again? We don't know the dad's name. We just know it's Derek. Redman. Derek's dad. Yeah, Derek's, Derek's dad. dad. Derek's yeah. dad, man. We, we're going to need, yeah. we're going to yeah. need those Derek's mm -hmm. dads. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Come alongside. The phrase muscle memory ironically comes mm -hmm. to mind. Um, yeah. I know it's another sports mm -hmm. talk, right? Sports but, ball, yeah. <laughs> sports ball. <laughs> but um, practicing faith practice mm -hmm. uh, when it's not the race, like when it's not the competition, when the heat isn't on, mm -hmm. when the like pressure isn't on, mm -hmm. like building that muscle memory, um, I think is helpful as well. Like just the practice of turning to Christ, turning mm -hmm. to Christ, turning to Christ daily. Mm -hmm. um, you know, will help us when we're having a Tuesday or a Friday mm -hmm. when we're like, ah, totally. Mm -hmm. what do I do? It's yeah. Like, okay, turn to Christ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Turn to Christ. The way he described, you know, wanting to be so close with Christ that he would even know his sufferings uh, reminded me of when we're close to people that we care about, we know like when they have a hard day, we have a hard day. Like mm -hmm. it hurts. Like it, yeah. if it hurts them, it hurts us. When they're happy, yeah. we're happy. Mm -hmm. um, you know them so well, you know, it's going to crack them up. Yeah. You know, it's going to mm -hmm. make them burst into tears. You're mm -hmm. just so close with them. Um, and Paul is yearning for that mm -hmm. uh, with Christ. And then he just says, you know, I haven't gotten there yet. I'm like on my way, yeah. well on my way. Yep. Um so I think it'll lead into your passage when he's saying, like, follow me, right? As I, or like, use my model. Mm -hmm. 
and it's in that direction. Like, get in my lane, lane five with me. Right? Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. It's like, come race with me or mm-hmm. train that muscle or follow um, my pattern. Um, so I don't, I don't see it as arrogant. I just kind of see it as he's an older believer, definitely discipled by the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ himself, right? Oh, so it's sure. like, yeah, super legit. And and so then he's just saying, "Come and follow," like the way that I'm doing it. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Not arrogant. Mm-mm. All right. Well, unless you guys have anything else, we should probably wrap it up because let's wrap it up. Yeah, we're at the half hour mark. So all right. Sounds um, good. Sweet. Well, thank you guys for um, listening or watching the follow-up podcast. And uh, just so you guys know, family meeting on Sunday and then week seven of Resilient Joy. Coming up this Sunday. You yeah. want to give yeah. a little sneak preview or you want to keep it a secret? Oh, it's going to be a secret. Just yeah. wait. Come here on Sunday. Well, because you're going to talk about that one thing. And oh, like yeah. We probably oh, I shouldn't. cannot wait. Yeah. That's that going to be my favorite yeah. part. Mind-blowing. I wish we could share it with people, but we, we can't wait till Sunday. Yeah. Keep it under wraps. All right. Well, you guys know what to do. Follow us. Be here on Sunday. And I uh, hope you guys have a great week. 